This video demonstrates one method of removing lines from a structure utilizing hot sticks. The task performed here would be required in replacing a cross arm, replacing an insulator, or replacing the pole. This video shows only one of the various methods available to remove the lines from the structure. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate one of the approved methods. The structure to be worked is a wooden three-phase distribution pole. The hot sticks required for this job include two two and a half inch by ten foot wire tongs, one two and a half by twelve foot wire tong, two one and a half inch by eight foot wire tongs, one one and a half inch by ten foot wire tong, two eight foot shotgun sticks, two eight foot universal hot sticks with rotary blade and rotary prongs, and one lever handled wire cutter. Other tools necessary to perform this job are six pole saddles, three with two and a half inch wire clamps and three with inch and a half wire clamps, two saddle extensions, one for two and a half inch pole clamp and one with an inch and a half pole clamp, one set of standard rope blocks with rope and one hand line, and cover up equipment to cover the cross arm and the phase not being worked. After all the tools are prepared for the job, you must move the neutral out of the work area. Since only one phase will be worked at a time, cover-up equipment is placed on the phases not being worked. This is done with shotgun sticks. An arm guard is placed on the side of the cross arm being worked first. This is also done with a shotgun stick. After the cover-up equipment is applied, you can start installing the pole saddles. The top pole saddle will have an inch and a half pole clamp on it, and the bottom pole saddle will have a two and a half inch pole clamp. After the pole saddles are installed, the inch and a half by eight foot wire tong is placed on the conductor and tightened. The wire tong should be attached to the line from the bottom side of the line. This will ensure the line is resting securely in the C head of the wire tong. The wire tong is then placed into the one and a half inch pole clamp and the clamp is tightened. The two and a half inch by ten foot wire tong is then placed next to the first wire tong on the line and tightened. It is then secured to the two and a half inch pole clamp. The pole saddles must not be too close to each other or you will not have complete control of the phase as you move it out from the pole. The fall end of the rope blocks are placed into the clevis on the pole saddle and the other end of the rope blocks are attached to the butt swivel of the two and a half inch wire tong. This will be your lifting device. The conductor is untied by using the rotary blade attachment. Excess wire is controlled by cutting the loose ends. After removing the tie wire, the conductor can now be moved. Personnel should be positioned with one man at each pole clamp location and one man on the rope blocks. While loosening the clamps, the personnel on the ground will apply tension to the rope blocks. As they pull, the conductor will lift out of the insulator. After proper lift is achieved, the one and a half inch wire tong will be used to push the phase out until desired clearance is met. Both the pole clamps will be retightened and the ground personnel will let the tension off the rope blocks. Next, the second set of tools are placed on the pole. You will notice the pole saddles will be off to the side of the pole. 
This is necessary to allow clearance for the center phase wire tongs. The wire tongs and rope block are rigged the same for this phase as they were for the first phase. After the conductor is untied, this phase will be pushed out of the way and secured. To rig the center phase, we will use a 10 foot and a 12 foot wire tong. These wire tongs are longer because we will be moving the conductor a further distance. Place both the inch and a half pole saddle and the two and a half inch pole saddle on the pole. Notice that these saddles have extensions. This will allow the proper clearance for the wire tongs to move without rubbing the previously installed wire tongs. The procedure for rigging the blocks, untying the conductor, and moving the lines out of the work area will be repeated. With all the conductors safely secured outside the work area, many tasks can be performed such as changing the cross arm, changing one or all of the insulators, or replacing the pole. When ready, the procedure will be reversed to bring the conductors back to the pole. The first phase we moved out will be the last phase brought back in. 
The conductor will be tied to the insulator and the wire tong and pole saddles removed. The cover up will be repositioned to protect the phase not being worked. The second phase is now brought in and tied to the insulator. And finally, the first phase we moved out will be brought back in and tied to its insulator. After the conductor is secured to the insulator, the wire tongs and pole saddles will be removed from the structure. Then the cover-up equipment will be removed from the phases and the cross arms, and the neutral wire will be reattached to the pole, completing the job. This video will demonstrate a method for removing phases from a three-phase cross arm by using the auxiliary side arm. The tools required for this method will be an auxiliary side arm, a 14-foot wire tong, a 10-foot wire tong, two pole saddles with extensions, two pole clamps, one set of insulated tackle blocks with rope, two 8-foot shotguns, two universal sticks, and two line guards and a cross arm guard to cover up the phases and cross arms. Once the neutral is moved out of the work area, any phase that might be in reaching or falling distance that is not being worked must be covered. After phases are covered, mount the auxiliary sidearm on the pole. Have the wire tong snub bracket mounted to the auxiliary sidearm and mount the bracket against the pole. After mounting the bracket 
and auxiliary sidearm, drop down on the pole to the end of the auxiliary sidearm and mount the support pole to the auxiliary sidearm. Once the support pole is installed, raise the auxiliary sidearm up until it is level and install the support pole into the support pole bracket. Once the auxiliary sidearm is mounted, put the one and a half inch pole clamp below the wire tong snub bracket. This will be for your one and a half inch by ten foot wire tong. Also mount the two and a half inch pole clamp about five feet below the one and a half inch pole clamp. This will be for your two and a half inch wire tong. Install the inch and a half by ten foot wire tong onto the conductor and place it into the pole clamp. Then place a two and a half inch by fourteen foot wire tong on the conductor and place it into its pole clamp. Take the set of triple sheave blocks and install the fall line end of the blocks into the clevis on the pole saddle and install the other end of the blocks into the butt swivel on the two and a half inch wire tong. With the cross arm guard installed, take the universal stick and start untying the first conductor. The type of wire tie that is used will dictate what type of fitting will be put on the universal sticks. On this structure they are aluminum tie wires and we are using rotary prong and rotary blade on the universal stick. While untying the tie wire, cut off any excess length of the tie wire that might come in contact with grounded objects. After untying the conductor, have ground personnel pull on the fall line of the blocks that are rigged to the two and a half inch by fourteen foot wire tong. As they pull on the blocks, it will raise the conductor off the insulator. When enough lift is met, push the conductor out till it reaches the conductor holder on the auxiliary sidearm. Drop the conductor into the holder and remove all tension from both wire tongs. Make sure that the conductor is locked into the holder. Remove the wire tongs from the conductor that was moved out and install them on the next conductor to be moved and tighten them down on that conductor.
Once again, with the cross arm guard installed, take the universal sticks and untie the conductor from the insulator. While untying the conductor, cut any long piece of tie that might be a hazard. After the conductor is untied, have ground personnel pull on the blocks that are rigged to the 2.5 inch by 14 foot wire tong. When proper lift is met, push the conductor out until it rests in the conductor holder on the auxiliary sidearm. Make sure that the conductor is locked into the holder. Next, transfer both wire tongs onto the last conductor to be moved off the wooden cross arm. There is no need to reposition the pole saddles. After the wire tongs are in place and the cross arm guard is installed, start untying the conductor, remembering to cut any long pieces of tie wire that might be a hazard. After the conductor is untied, the ground personnel will again pull on the blocks that are rigged to the 2.5 inch by 14 foot wire tongs. When proper lift is achieved, push the inch and a half by 10 foot wire tong out until clearance is made for doing whatever task is required. Once clearance is met, tighten down on both wing nuts on the pole clamps to secure the phase. After all tasks are performed, we will start bringing the phases back to the structure and tying them in. Have ground personnel keep tension on the rope blocks and loosen up the wing nuts that are on the pole clamps. Then pull in on the one and a half inch by ten foot wire tong. When the phase is in a position over the insulator, have the ground personnel slowly come off the blocks and guide the phase onto the insulator using the one and a half inch wire tong. Once the conductor is in the insulator, tighten up both wing nuts on the pole clamps 
and tie the conductor into the insulator using the universal sticks. Move both wire tongs to the next conductor to be tied in. Tighten down the wire tong on the conductor and rig the rope blocks to the two and a half inch wire tong. Have ground personnel put tension on the rope blocks and loosen the wing nut on the two and a half inch pole clamp. Then slowly pick up the conductor until proper height is achieved to clear the cross arm. Pull on the inch and a half by ten foot wire tong until the conductor is above the insulator. Have ground personnel slowly come off the blocks and guide the conductor onto the insulator with the inch and a half wire tong. Then tie the conductor into the insulator. The wire tongs are now placed on the last phase to be tied into the structure. Notice that the cover up has been reinstalled on the center phase and the cross arm guard positioned to the right side of the cross arm. Rig the rope blocks to the two and a half inch by fourteen foot wire tong and have ground personnel put tension on the rope blocks. Loosen up the wing nut on the two and a half inch pole clamp. Pick up on the rope blocks until proper height is achieved. Guide the conductor onto the insulator with the one and a half inch wire tong as ground personnel lower the conductor. Lock the wire tongs in place and tie the conductor back to the insulator.
After the conductor is secured, all the tools will be removed from the pole.